Hey Rep Bags, it's Jade. Taking a look today at what happened to Last Oasis and what the devs are doing next. And tying it into their publisher, Snail Games, which is very hot at the moment because of the problems and issues they've been causing in the art community. So let's get the bad stuff out of the way and then I might try and show you some gameplay. Although I did just record, or thought I was recording for about 40 minutes, it turns out I hadn't pressed it. I don't think I really want to sit through it anymore. So I'll probably just show some of the demo gameplay they've got up. Effectively, there's a new game. It's called Bell Riot. Supposedly, it's going to be a single player or online co-op game. Medieval kind of dynasty style. Third person, running around various medieval kind of looking biomes. Fighting bandits, building up your own towns. It is indeed made by the same people that made Last Oasis. Last Oasis launched over three years ago now and it's a PvP focused survival game. It had potential, it had promise, it did actually some good numbers. 33,000 players peak in its first week despite having some massive issues with players connecting. You can see that big massive spike there and then of course it dropped. Now usually online games like these if they drop that low they don't often have a good chance of recovering. Scum might be the most recent good I guess game that has managed to get more and more players. Maybe not approaching the peak they once had but certainly doing better than they did. But Last Oasis kind of died quite a bit. It was too focused on PvP not enough activities and players were just basically bored and nothing to do but go and zerg and ruin other players. It did have a huge amount of clans in it, caps just were kind of non-existent and they tried various things. Some success, getting 5,000, 4,000 players back and then Dimension turns by the time 2021 came. They then had a big stretch with no updates, not really much communication during then as much but they hit it with one of their biggest played updates since the game's inception. 6,000 players returned in August last year. Since then, numbers have dwindled massively until now it's like on the 127 player peak amount. For a game that supposedly was meant to, I do believe, support 40 or 50,000 players, yeah, this is a problem. So what's the problem? They're making a new game. They've had not success with their last one. That's pretty normal for a first time studio. Problem is they've not communicated anything about that last game. Literally the last tweet on Twitter was in August. Their last announcement in Discord was like pretty much back in November last year. And that was, I do believe for a beta branch of one of their upcoming updates that was meant to be added. And as far as I can tell, unless I really want to go sorting and sifting through billions of comments, it does look like to all intent and purposes, they have abandoned this game. 27% of the reviews are only positive. Their all time score has gone down to 64, which isn't the lowest I've seen. But yeah, they've not had an update in such a long time. No news, no info, no acknowledgement. That last Oasis is kind of dead and done. Instead, they've gone on just to start working on their new game. I will repeat it in the back. I don't mind a game failing. Last Oasis shouldn't have failed. It sold a million copies in the first six months. It had a good amount of players, even with the drop off and problems. It could have been solved by maybe getting more experienced developers on board or trying to find extra ways to generate revenue. But it looks like at some point during that life cycle, they did then basically sell out to Snail Games. I found nothing about them being in partnership with Snail Games before they launched the game, before pretty much the first year. And then maybe last year was when the first signs that actually something had gone on, Snail Games had bought into them or something had happened. And they clearly own the studio now as they're owning the rights to this game as well. But yeah, a game can fail. Early access games fail all the time. But what you need to do is own it. You need to say, you know what? We messed up. We could try getting this dead horse going again, or in their case, dead donkey. But it's simply going to be too much of our resources, too much money, and we just can't really afford or, you know, really make it work. Say stuff happened, say some of the development team left, maybe some of the development team sold their stake in the game and moved on. Whatever the reasons, come up with something. Otherwise, who is really going to go and buy this new game? There is a massive, massive backlash going on at the moment against Snail Games. They've banned like 90 players from playing in special ARC servers where the CEO of Snail Games, the publisher that owns Art Survival Evolved, actually plays on the servers. And he was losing a match in these specially hosted servers and he basically banned all the players that were fighting against him. It seems to be pretty nefarious. It's not the first time they've been accused of cheating, literally the CEO paying admins to spawn in creatures or ban players that are beating them. 
Flip side of that is, out there 93 players, maybe one or two of them could have been cheating, but either way, it's not a good look. Now, that happened over a month ago, some big creators were part of that group, and Snail Games or Ark Survival Evolved developers Wildcard haven't mentioned or referenced or spoken about it. There's been a huge outcry, tons of videos made, but despite all that negativity, there's not been a single word to defend their own actions or talk about what's gone on. On top of all that, you've got the controversy that ARK obviously had its plans changed. ARK 2 delayed to 2024. The remaster was announced earlier on this year, causing a lot of backlash from me and other ARK creators that still play the game, effectively questioning why we need a remaster or the way that they announced their plans. We still don't have a date for that, even though it's meant to be coming out in August. So maybe Donkey Crew just don't realise this, that the company they've basically got investment from are just one of the most notorious for not finishing the game. We've got a whole list of games that have failed and flopped, with Ark only being the one that's successful. Atlas, of course, abysmal when it launched, still going somehow, but really not got that many great reviews. The Minecraft Ark ripoff Pixark, supposedly doing okay, but game after game, they've left abandoned in early access, or has come out of early access and just not actually been a finished product that you should ever, ever spend your money on. Outlaws of the Older West, abandoned. Dark and Light, abandoned. Fear the Night, launched in such a bad state with no real content. So a huge reputation in basically being a terrible publisher. Based in China with American offices, they seem immune to understanding what's going on in the world. Every tweet they do is flooded with people complaining and basically giving them crap, whether it's to do with the actual ARC situation and banning players, the rip-off that they're doing with the ARC remaster, or people just remembering so many of the other games that they published and released that never got finished. This is a company that's tried to put in microtransactions with pretty much crypto into their games, only just about being stopped by wildcard developers from adding tech shields and tech drills into ARK that you'd have to pay for in real world money, effectively making it pay to win. They've set up a brand new game because they maybe realised they can't just shoehorn crypto into ARK. And it turns out the trailer for that new game was made completely using uh, AI, taking away actual good work from actual proper artists and trailer makers. Snow Games are the epitome of the tech bro developers you don't want. They got put on the stock exchange in November last year, and despite coming in at a pretty good high, dropped massively. The last few months since the announcement of ARK Remaster and the ARK 2 delay, plus other controversies, it has dropped their stock prices to an historic low. But in the last few weeks or so, it has now crept up, going back to, I would say, similar or normal levels. So while impact from so many creators making video upon video and tweeting and giving them criticism might have had a small dent, it's not really changed things in the grand scheme of things. So back to Bell Wright, what? are these guys thinking? I championed Last Oasis pretty hard when it launched. One of my preview videos got picked up by Angry Joe and he shed a bunch of light on the game and that generated a huge amount of buzz. I covered it obviously when it launched. I was quite excited by the game. I like a bit of PvP and I felt like this had so many solutions. It had ways to stop offline raiding. You could take your massive walkers and effectively put them offline, off map, so players couldn't necessarily damage and take your goods. It was focused on these giant walkers as being a core mechanic to get around the desert and other tile environments, and it freshened things up because the world was constantly changing. They could shut servers down and open them up, but you could always take your stuff with you, majority-wise. You could even pack up some of your bases. They tried various iterations and differences to make it all work, and although the combat was a bit janky, it really was fun. Some of these actual constructs were amazing to drive. I certainly would have tapped them up massively for making another game just to get them to work on this. Even if they did steal the idea and didn't give appropriate credit to the artist and guy that actually originally came out with this motion-based walkers. Seemingly after a court case was about to hit, they eventually settled and they gave credit to the artist that originally designed the concept of these types of walkers. So I was rooting for Last Oasis. Yes, it was too focused on PvP. There wasn't enough systems to keep players involved or engaged, and just wasn't much else to do other than gank other players. It was complex how you crafted a dent something, and it was trying to blend that MMO survival PvP space. It was going to have grand sort of commerce, but never really took off that way. 
So I just don't understand. I don't understand how you can abandon a game that seemed moderately successful and now just work on a new one without a word, without a simple statement saying the problems that have happened, why they can't continue to work on Last Oasis. If I've got it wrong, maybe they're just having a long extended break for some reason, maybe they've had to deal with issues, maybe the developers that originally kind of made Last Oasis sold their stake and moved on, who knows? But you've got to have something going around. There's got to be some word. Otherwise, who is going to trust them? Who is going to buy this Bellwright game? Now that you know the developers are not able to finish something, can't communicate, and the publisher that owns both of them games is one of the most notoriously worst in gaming. It is incredible. I just don't understand it. If uh, Bellwright devs donkey crew want to talk to me and correct a few things they want to get their side of a story out there then do let me know i'm happy to chat with you guys and give you a space i really did admire what you was doing last oasis as first time devs but this is this is not forgivable i certainly won't be supporting this game i'm not even going to go and try and play the demo and i just encourage anyone else to ignore this game with all your heart you see other tubers that are seem oblivious to the stuff that's gone around with it and although it might look okay and interesting just please don't do it. Just don't do it. Not until you see this game come out of early access. It's got rave reviews from everyone around it. The people that did somehow put some time into it. Don't invest money into something if it's not going to be a finished product in the end of the day. And that's it. Until next time, Rat Bags. Just a little highlight video today of this. Let me know what you think about it. Do they deserve another chance? Is it all just too dramatic? This happens all the time. Or should they just come out and talk about what went wrong? And then maybe they could get some support for their next venture. As always, the home of survival games, news, gameplay, and guides. I'll see you at bags later.